quarter two is chuck full of a ton of stuff. So by the end of the review, should have a headache, should feel smart, and accomplished. So the first part, um, factoring. So it's kind of a build on of what we did last year. Last year we did a ton of factoring. So number one, if you've got this polynomial, always try to see if you can simplify it. And number one, that trinomial, you can divide each of them by five. So if you divide them all by five, that should be your first move. So five times, if you divide this first term by five, that's just one, b squared. If you divide the middle by five, that's 16, b. And if you divide 315 divided by five, that is 63. Okay, now always try and see if you can go any further. So you can break this trinomial now. You can break it up into one more step. So when it starts with the one, it's pretty easy. It's not too bad. What you're looking for is something that's going to times and give you 63, but it's going to add and give you the middle. So what times this and gives you 63, but then adds to give you 16, and that should be a 9 and a 7. So then this is going to be B and B, a 9 and a 7. And since everything is positive, your signs are both positive. And that is as far as you can go. So factor and just rewrite it as a times problem. Number 2. Um, there's nothing that 25, 20, and 4 have in common at the same time. But this should jump out at you, and this should jump out at you. Those are special numbers. Those are both perfect squares. So this is going to be a special case. And when you've got a polynomial that starts with the perfect square and ends with the perfect square, they're not too bad. So how they're getting this 25n squared is 5n times 5n. And how they're getting the my out of the 4 is just square root. You just take square roots of them. So that's going to be 2 and 2. And your middle will tell you what the sides need to be. So this is a negative 20. So these both need to be minus. And here's where they're getting the negative 20. So this is my answer right here. But you can always check your answer. If you distribute through, you should get what you started with. You should get the problem. So 5n times 5n is 25n squared. 5n times a minus 2 is a minus 10n, and a minus 2 times 5n is a minus 10n, and a minus 2 times a minus 2 is a plus 4. And then this is where they get the minus 20n, so 25n squared minus 20n plus 4, which is what we started with. Okay, number 3 is also a special case. That's a perfect square, that's a perfect square, but 3 has no middle like 2 did. So 3, how they get the 4k squared is 2k times 2k, and how they get the 9 is 3 and 3, but it's a negative 9. The only way you can times get a negative is one's positive and one's negative. And that will mean your middle zeroes out, because if you do the 2k times a minus 3, that's a minus 6k, and if you do 3 times 2k, that's a plus 6k, and those are like terms, and they will zero out. Okay, number 14, you've got four terms, so if you got four terms, group two of them together. So I'm going to group these two together, and 14 and 4, they got in common, you can divide out just a 2. But they each got some k's, so take a k squared out of both. So if you divide both those by 2k squared, it's going to be 2k squared times 7k plus 2. And k, okay, then minus 21k minus 6, divide both of those by 3. But I'm going to take, since both of them are negative, I'm going to take the negative out of both of them. Divide them both by a negative 3. So it's going to be a negative 3 
and that divided by negative 3 is 7k and that divided by negative 3 is 2. Okay, now group 1 versus group 2 they've both got the 7k plus 2 so your final answer in one of the groups you're going to put that 7k plus 2 in the other group you're going to put this 2k squared minus 3 and that's it. Okay, number 5 Stare at it for a second. Number five, they got nothing in common, but you can take some N's out of all of them. So they all got some N's. So move number one, let's take some N's out of all of them. So let's change it to N squared times 5 N squared plus 13 N plus 6. Okay, now five. 5 and 13 and 6 got nothing in common, and 5 is not a perfect square, and neither is 6. So this is the hardest type. If it does not start with a 1, it is the hardest type. You need to change this trinomial, change it from 3 pieces, change it into 4 pieces. So you're going to go 5n squared plus blank plus blank plus 6. What you're going to do is you're going to break this middle into two pieces instead of one piece. <clears throat> so, 13. You're going to trade it for something that is equal to 13 because that's the only way that you can get around that legally. Now, a few times the very, very first to the very, very last. 5 times 6, your number is 30. The middle times the middle will also give you 30. So the first times the last is 30 and the middle times the middle is 30 so you're looking for something that times is to give you 30 but the middle has got to add in total to be 13 it's got to add and be 13 so what two numbers times give you 30 add and give you 13 and it is 10 and 3 so I'm gonna break 13 into two pieces 10 n and 3 3n, because that's really the same as 13n. And now my middles times give you 30, my n's times give you 30, so now I got four pieces. Do it just like you did four, group them. So group these two together, divide these both by 5n. So it's going to be 5n times n plus 2. And then these, divide both these by 3 three so it's going to be three times m plus two so your final answer in one of the groups is going to be m plus two and in your other group is going to be five m plus three and oh and then we got to take this n squared i guess and put it out there because the first thing you did was divide a n square out so that should go on the outside. Okay, the next two um, cubes. These are going to be cubes. So this 16x cubed minus 2, I can take out of both those. I can divide them by 2. So it's going to be 2 times 8x cubed minus 1. And now this is a cube. And I'm going to swap out 8. 8 is a cube, so it's really what I want to look at is 2 times 2 cube x cube minus, and even 1 is a cube, that's 1 cube. All those three things are cubes. So cubes are a little bit different. So you're going to have two groups, but in the first group, you're just going to have this without the cube. So you're going to have 2x minus 1. But now in the second group you're going to have three pieces. The first piece <coughs> comes from the first. And the first piece is 2x times 2x. So the first piece is 4x squared. The middle piece, now the signs, since this is a minus, I'm going to go plus. The middle piece is these times together, so 2x times 1, because I don't really worry about the sign. 
So 2x times 1 is 2x. Because I know the sign's going to, it's got to be plus. Okay, now the last piece, um, the last piece is always plus. The only signs you need to worry about are these, and they're always opposite. If this is plus in the first, then it's minus in the second. Minus in the first, then it's plus in the second. Okay, the last piece comes from the last piece times itself. So 1 times 1. So your answer is 2 times 2x minus 1. And then 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. And the next one. Okay, the next one. <clears throat> 216 and 343. Um... You have a list of what the cubes are. I think those are cubes. Okay, 343, I know. That is 7 cube. So you, the first thing is you want to either shrink them down, divide them both by something, but I don't think they have anything in common. Or if it is a cube, like this was an 8 over here, you got to swap it out for its cube. Okay, 216. Oh, is that 4? I don't know what that is. Is that 6? Six? 6 times 6 times 6? Okay, it is. So it's 6 cube x cube. So move number 1, write it all as cubes. Now, if it is cubes, the first parentheses are going to be whatever that is. So it's going to be 6x minus 7y without all the cubes. The first piece is the first piece times itself. So that's 36x squared. That's a minus, so that's a plus. The middle piece is those times together. So 6 times 7, that's 42xy. And the last piece is that times itself. So 7y times 7y, that's 49y squared. Okay, the next one. You're given a polynomial and one of its factors. So you gotta find the remaining factors. So it's a division problem. So if I give you 8 and I say one of the factors is 4, the question is 4 times what is gonna give you 8? So this is a factor, this is a factor, this is a product. So they're giving you the product, and they're giving you one of the factors. So the question is, x plus 2 times what is going to give you x cubed minus x squared minus 10x? So it's going to be division, divide by 4, divide by 4. The answer for that has got to be 2. So, because it starts with the uh, 1, we can use synthetic division. Okay, now synthetic division, in the template, I'm going to put uh, a minus 2. Put whatever the opposite of that is. Okay, now, that is a 1, that is a 1, and it goes in order. 3, 2, 1, 0. So I'm going to put just the coefficients. So I'm going to put a 1, minus 1, a minus 10, and a minus 8. Okay. This is going to be my remainder column. So bring the 1 down. Times them. Negative 2. Add them. Negative 3. Times them. So that's positive 6. Add them. Negative 4 times them, positive 8, add them, 0, no remainders. So, x plus 2 times x minus, no, 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 let's see. Since it was a degree 3, this is going to be degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. So it's going to be x squared minus 3x minus 4. So these are are the two factors but this factor can be broken down into two more factors you can multiply uh, since this is one that's going to be a piece of cake how you times you get x squared is just x times x 
what you're looking for is what times is and gives you a minus 4, but adds and gives you a middle. Adds and gives you a minus 3. And it is a minus 4 and a positive 1. So those will times to give you minus 4. They'll add to give you minus 3. Okay. Next page. List all the possible types of roots you could get if you have a quintic trinomial. So your polynomial. That's the only word you need to know. That is degree 5. So that's something to the 5th, blah, 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 blah. This is the only thing that matters. If it's degree 5, that means there's going to be 5 roots. Okay, there's two types. There's real and there's imaginary. So here we go. That means... I could have 5 real, 0 imaginary, 4 real, 1 imaginary, 3 real, 2 imaginary, 2 real, 3 imaginary, 1 real, 4 imaginary, 0 real, 5 imaginary. So you can have 5 roots total. Some could be real, some could be imaginary. Here's all the possibilities, but your imaginaries always have to come in pairs. They always come in twos. They're conjugates. They're opposites. So you can never have an odd amount of imaginary. So this is impossible. This one's out the window. You cannot have three imaginaries. Imaginaries got to be paired up. And you cannot have that. So you got three options. Five could be real, no imaginaries. Or three could be real and two imaginaries. Or one real and four imaginaries. Okay, the next one. Um, same question except for it's quartic. That means degree four. So there's going to be four roots. So real, imaginary. I could have four real and zero imaginary. Or I could have uh, two imaginary and two real. Or I could have four imaginary and zero real. So I got three options, three different possibilities. And that's all the question is asking. Next, if I give you the roots, can you give me the polynomial? So these are the roots. Three and a negative five. If you're looking at the picture, there's two roots. So it's a parabola. It's a quadratic. There's a root at three. And there's a root somewhere over here at minus 5. So your parabola could look something like that. So, we're going to go backwards and get the equation. Which is not too bad. So I'm going to go x and I'm going to go x. Now, this 3 plugs into this one and creates a 0. So it's got to be minus 3, because if I put 3 in for x, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 0 times this is 0. And the minus 5 into this one, it's got to be a plus 5. Because if I do a minus 5 plus 5, that's 0. So there is my polynomial. Now just uh, distribute it and so let's see what it is. So it's going to be x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 15 so it's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 15 that's the polynomial that will give you these two roots a root at 3 and a root at negative 5 okay the next one it's kind of a trick question they give you two roots but there's actually three roots because imaginary is always got to come in pairs. So if they're giving you a root is two imaginary, the missing is a negative two imaginary. Okay, now let's do the imaginaries first. Well, you've got three roots, so that means you're going to have three sets of parentheses. So this one in here is going to be a plus one. In here is going to be a minus 2i. In here is going to be a plus 2i. Okay, now if you start times and these together, do the imaginaries first. 
x, so if I do x times x, that's x squared, x times 2i is plus 2ix, minus 2i times x is a minus 2ix, and a minus 2i times a positive 2i is a minus 4, but i times i is i squared, and any time you have i times i, that's a negative 1. So this really is a negative 4 times a negative 1. And a negative 4 times a negative 1 is a positive 4. And 2ix minus 2ix, that's 0. So you just got x squared and a positive 4. Okay, now you got to take that x squared and a positive 4, and you got to times it by the x plus 1. So the x squared times the x is x cubed. The x squared times 1 is x squared. The 4 times the x is 4x. The 4 times the 1 is 4. And that's it. That is the polynomial that will give you those three roots. Okay, composing functions. So if you're looking at a graph, I got two graphs here, two functions. We'll call the parabola function g, and we'll call the linear line function f. So question number one, they want you to find g of f of 2. So what they want you to do is they want you to take 2 and plug it into f. And this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis, and you're going to put in for the x 2. So along the x-axis, come over and find 2, and then go up and find the y of f. So that's f right there, and you had to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2 gives you a 4. Now they want you to take that 4 and plug it into the g. So come over here on the 4, go up until you hit the g, which is right there at 7. So the answer to this, you end up at 7. Okay, take 5 and plug it into g, so come along on the x of 5, go up till you hit g, that's right there, you had to go up 4 high. Now take that 4 and plug it into the line f, so come over here back, I'll start back here at 0, come along the x till you hit 4, and go up until you hit f, the linear one, so that's where you end up right there you end up at 8. Okay, this last one, these little circles, they're the same thing. So it really is the same as this. G of F of F of 1. So it's the same thing. You just start with the 1, plug it into F, take that answer, plug it into F, you just kind of work your way towards the left. So there we go. I'm going to come over 1, plug it into F. That gives me 2. Now take 2, plug that into F. So come over here at 2. Go up till you hit F. You have to go 4 high. Now take 4 and plug it into G. So come over 4. And at G, you are at 7. 7 is the answer. That's where you end up. Okay, these two over here, let's do the bottom one first. The bottom one's easier because you're plugging in a number. Now, G compose F. That little circle means compose. That's the same as G of F of 6. So you need to take 6 and plug it into F. Okay, now F is N squared minus 5N. That is F. So... In place of these ends, you need to substitute 6. So it's really going to be, instead of n, it's going to be 6 squared. I guess it's not plus, it's minus 5 times n, but instead of n, you're putting a 6. So first 6 squared, that's 36. Then a minus 5 times 6, that's a minus 30. 
and 36 minus 30 is 6. So here we go. We just plugged 6 into F and it gave us 6. So now take that answer and plug it into G. So G says N minus 4, but in place of the N, put the 6. So 6 minus 4 is 2, is where you should end up. Okay, the one above it is a little bit harder because you're not plugging in a number. You're not plugging in arithmetic, you're plugging in algebra. So you need to take a 4x. First, it's going to go into G. So G says whatever you plug in, you square it, and then you take away 3. So I'm going to plug in a 4x, and 4x squared is 4x times 4x, so that is 16x squared, and then I got a minus 3. And those are not like terms, so I'm done. Now take that answer and plug it into F. F says 2 times whatever you plug in, and then plus 1. So 16x squared minus 3. So 2 times the 16x squared is going to be 32x squared. 2 times a minus 3 is a minus 6, and then plus 1. So 32x squared minus 5, and that is your answer. That's what you end up at. Okay, let's look at the next page. Okay, the next page, um, they want you to find g of n subtract f of n. So you're just going to take the rule g, n cubed plus 5n, and you are going to subtract the rule f, but you have to write it like this. You have to subtract both of those pieces. You have to subtract n, and you have to subtract a minus 4, which is minus minus 4, so that's plus 4. Okay, now, n cubed does not have any like terms, so n cubed, wow. But the 5n and the minus n, those play together, and that is 4n. And the 4 does not have any like terms, so that is a cubic trinomial. And that is your answer. That's what you end up with. Okay, now the next one, you're going to take G, and you're going to times it to H. So this little dot is times. So G is 4N times H. H is a binomial. It's two things, 3N plus 3, so you must times both of those terms by 4n. 4n times the 3n is 12n squared, and then 4n times 3 is 12n. And that's what you get. That's your answer. Okay, the next two, this means inverse. So, it says find the inverse of f if f of x is 2x minus 3. So the inverse, they kind of want you to undo this function. So you've got a list of like five steps. Step number one. So look, before we do that, let's look at what the table of 2x minus 3 is. So this table of 2x minus 3, this rule right here, if I plug a 1 in for x, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. If I plug in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 take away 3 is 1. If I plug a 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 3 is 3. If I plug a 4, it will give you 5. So the inverse is going backwards. So for example, if I plugged a 4 in, it gave me a 5. The inverse says, well, I'm going to plug a 5 in, and it should give me 4. I'm going to plug a 3 in, and it should give me 3. I'm going to plug a 1 in, and it should give me 2. 
I'm going to plug a negative 1 in and it should give me 1. I'm just undoing these. I'm undoing the 5, undoing the 3, I'm going totally backwards. So to find the inverse, all you are doing is switching your x's and your y's places. All of these x's now become my y's and all of these y's now become my x's. So all you're doing is flip-flopping your x and your y. So this is y equals 2x minus 3. Now to find the inverse, just flip-flop your x and your y. x equals 2y minus 3. Now, just get y all by itself. So let's plus 3, plus 3. So you got 2y equals x plus 3. And then undo the times 2, divide by 2, divide both of those by 2. So the inverse is equal to x plus 3 divided by 2. That is the equation that will undo this equation. The next one. What will undo squaring something and then adding 1? y equals x squared plus 1. Okay, just flip flop your x and your y. So it's going to be x equals y squared plus 1. What will undo the plus 1? Minus 1. So x minus 1. And what will undo the square? Square root. But you got to tell me both the outcomes, the plus root and the minus root. So the inverse is equal to the plus or minus square root of x minus 1. Okay, determine whether each pair of functions are inverse. So you got two functions, g and f. The question is, are they inverse? Do they undo each other? Yes or no? So all you really got to do is undo one of them. So I'm going to take g. So y equals negative 3x plus 3 divided by 2. Okay, I'm going to undo this. So I'm going to flip-flop my x and my y. So it's going to be x equals y. No, no, no. x equals a negative 3y plus 3 divided by 2. Okay, now this one, there's a lot to undo first you got to undo the divide 2. So you got to times 2 times 2. So it's going to be 2x equals a minus 3y plus 3. Then you got to undo the minus 3. So minus 3 minus 3. So it's 2x minus 3 equals a minus 3y. Okay, now you got to undo the divide by, undo the times negative 3, so divide negative 3, divide negative 3, and that is the inverse. So is that the same as that? And it does not look like it is, but it really is, because... This 3 is positive, and this 3 is negative. This 3 is positive, and this 3 is negative, and this 2x is negative, and this one's positive. So they actually are equal, because here's what they're doing. If you have a negative 1 half, it does not matter if the negative is with the 1, or it can be with the 2. Or it can just be out front in the middle. These are all equal. So if you have a negative, it can either go to the top or it can go to the bottom. Or it can just stay out front and they're all the same thing. So what they did here is they have, they have the negative on the bottom. So it looks like this guy. But if you take that negative to the top, take that negative to the top, 
that's going to make this one negative and this one positive which is what they've got so yes those are inverse okay the next one I'm going to do y equals negative one third x plus three Okay, I'm going to flip flop my x and y, so it's going to be x equals negative 1 third y plus 3. So I'm going to minus 3, minus 3, so it's going to be minus 3 plus x equals a minus 1 third y. Okay, now I just got to undo this minus 1 third times y. So how you undo times is you divide by a minus 1 third divide by a minus one third and dividing by a fraction is the same as timesing by the reciprocal so I'm going to take the negative three plus x and I'm going to times it by the reciprocal of this so I'm going to times it by a negative three so if I times both those by a negative three it's going to be a positive nine minus three x and what do we got? We got a minus 3x, but we don't got a positive 9. We got a minus 3. So this one is a no. And then the last question. This data shows info from a function f. What would the data look like from the inverse of that function f? So the data from the inverse would just flip-flop your x's and y's. So your x would be 1,000, 970, 880, etc. And the y would be 0, 1, 2. All you do is the x's become the y's and the y's become the x's.